Hi there, this is Brett Lonsdale and in this video we're going to take a further look at custom action buttons. So what I want to do first of all is take us into the edit form and uh, most of the time so far throughout these videos we've been spending our time in the new form um, but as I mentioned in the previous video there's not usually that much in the way of buttons that you're going to be creating in the new form. Uh, we're going to have a save button, we're going to have a cancel button, we're going to have a submit button that we've already created. Uh, but what we're going to do in the edit form is a little bit more because this is where things like our approval can uh, take place, we can also generate documents, uh, we may also decline uh, the purchase order and so on. So what we're going to do is jump into the edit form. So you'll notice here we've got lightning forms and uh, as we load that we've already got edit form customized. As we go into the purchase order form what we're going to do is go through and add some action buttons. Now I've already got a few here um, which have been carried over from before and uh, I'm going to walk you through those ones to save creating the buttons all the time. Um, but what we are going to do is create one brand new button. So we're going to go to the command bar and we're going to add an approval button. So we'll call this approve and again just like before we're going to go through and select an approval icon of some sort. I'm just going to use the simple check mark and in here we only want the approve button to be available to approvers so what we're going to do is, uh, is set the visible property on that one so we'll go through and select that. Now when we're inside the visibility condition just like all of the other uh, expressions that we're building and we'll get more into this in the expression section uh, but you'll notice that we've got the template the assignment and the function so we're going to be on the assignment section which is where we can use our different fields and our different objects and uh, and sublists and so on so we're going to get into the context objects and against the current user we are going to check whether the user is a member of a group. Now there's two similar functions here. The first one is, is a member of an Azure Active Directory security group. And the second one is, is the member of a group, which is a SharePoint group. Um, so this top one also includes Microsoft 365 groups, if you are using those. Uh, this is purely uh, SharePoint groups in, in this case. So what I'm going to do here is just put in the name of the group, uh, which is going to be approvers. Okay, so if we are inside this approvers group, uh, then we will uh, be able to click that button uh, and we'll be able to see that button. So that's our, our condition. Getting into the actions, so if we uh, click onto actions here, uh, what we're going to want to do is first of all set a condition. And I'll tell you why I'm setting a condition. We've kind of already got a condition against the button, so we have to be an approver for that button to even display. Uh, but what I don't want to happen is somebody approving the purchase order more than once. So if it's already been approved, we, we don't want to sort of kick off emails and so on unnecessarily. Uh, so what I'm going to do inside the condition is go into the expression builder for the condition. And what we're going to do is come down and find our status field. Uh, so here it is. So we're going to say status is equal to approved. Okay, so uh, again, we can test that, see whether we get a true or false from any of these other purchase orders, uh, which we uh, we should see. Okay, so if the status is approved, then what we want to do is just simply send a message and do nothing more than that. So what I'm gonna do is choose a show message. And in here, we're gonna have a status warning so I'm just going to give it the title of warning. We'll have it show for five seconds. It's going to be a warning type. So that'll be yellow. And we're just going to say, you have already approved this purchase order. Okay. So that's what's going to happen if the status is equal to approved. So if the status is not equal to approved, uh, then what we're going to do is uh, just come in and, and first of all, do a save. That's to, to save any properties that the uh, approver may have changed or anything like that whilst being in the edit form. And uh, we're then going to have a few set field values. Okay, so um, I'm going to have three, uh, first of all. So the first one is simply going to set the status, and this is similar to what we did before. So we just set status is equal to, 
and uh, we can use a template for this. Uh, we're just going to put in some, some text here. So the status is equal to approved. So that's going to be our, our return value. And once again, we can we can test that. In fact, we don't need those because we're using the template. We don't need to use our double quotes. It's just going to return the word approved like that. OK, so that's that one set. Um, and then we're also going to set who approved it. So we're going to enter the approval bar or approved by. And, uh, and in here, again, no need for any code in this particular example. We can just go against the current uh, context objects, the current user and double click on the title of the current user so that is who approved it uh, so we've got that now for this third one uh, we actually want to have a new field um, so uh, in fact let me just remove that for a second we'll remove that action we're going to okay this and come back to it so we'll save our uh, approve button I don't have an approval date which would be really useful so what I'm going to do is add that so um, we're going to create a new field called it's going to be a date time and we're going to call it approved date okay so uh, that's our field we can obviously set all of uh, the, the properties here the, the standard SharePoint properties but yeah there's my my field here so back to the command bar back to our actions uh, we'll put that set field value back again and what we should be able to select is our approved date there it is okay and this time we're going to need to jump into some code um, but it's only a small amount of code uh, so what we're going to do here is uh, jump onto the function because there isn't actually any context objects that returns today's date so we need to get today's date using a small amount of javascript okay so what we're going to do is just create a variable called uh, date and set that equal to today's date and then we'll return date in our function okay so a single line and uh, again we can just test that it doesn't matter which uh, item we choose uh, you can see here it's returning the date and time uh, in British summer time which is fantastic okay so, uh, so we've got that as our third set field value and the next thing we want to do is just send an email out So we're going to send this email from, again, the current user, or the current user's email address, to uh, the, the, the person who requested this. Um, so uh, I think we have a request or requested by. And notice as I expand the requested by, which is just a people column, I can get to all of the different properties in there, including their email. So we'll, we'll go through and select that. Um, and uh, we'll put something like congratulations as the subject and your purchase order has been approved. OK. And uh, of course, we could send those attachments and so on and so forth. OK, so uh, that's our, our email. And then finally, we want another save form uh, because we set some field values and then we would close the form. All right. Now, actually, I forgot to put these into the no condition. So let's just drop those in there. Otherwise, they're going to fire in both circumstances. OK, so we should be good uh, behind that, that button. So that is our approve button. And uh, we will save that and uh, test that out shortly. Um, before we move into it, let's just have a look at some of these other buttons that we, we have. So we've got our approve here. Uh, we also have a request change. So that's just being polite instead of saying decline. Um, so this one, if we go into the configure actions, in fact, there's, there's nothing there. So this is where we could go through and uh, you know, send an email to say uh, it's been declined. You need to change something. And uh, we've then got a generate document. now. Uh, this one here is a premium action. So uh, there is a gen generate document premium action by Lightning Tools. And what this one will do is allow us to generate a document uh, that is 
in Microsoft Word form and then we can of course save that uh, we can email it or, or anything we like um, with that uh, that document so what you'll notice as I expand this one uh, we have got a word document I'm going to click on to edit that so this is the uh, the word document in question and um, it's creating a purchase order form with our branding on it and you'll notice in here we've got placeholders with the double square brackets that's how we reference the fields coming from the form in your SharePoint list and even when you've got a sub list notice that we can loop through those we're using the loop statement with the name of the sub list and then we're getting the title the quantity the unit price and the line total for every single item inside that sub list and then we're ending the loop okay so that's the the document and uh, if we just uh, close that down uh, you'll see that that has been uploaded so uh, once you create your document you can upload it here and um, we can also then go through and select it and it goes into this document library here called the M document generator and uh, that's where my purchase order template exists okay so we can go through and, and select that now as we look down here you'll notice that we've got some choices with the generate document so what is the data source for the word document and we've got that set to a single item the item is coming from the purchase order list so we specify the list and the ID for the item that we want to put into the word document is the current ID so we just need to put ID and that's going to reference the ID from your currently opened form now I then have a choice as to whether to open up that document or to save it so I am saving it out to a library which is the document library called documents into a subfolder called purchase orders and the file name is constructed of the title which is the purchase order number okay so, uh, so that's all that button is doing so whenever we click that it will generate that document for me and what we're then doing is a send to vendor so if we go in and have a look at this action we'll configure that one and you'll notice that again that we've got a send email uh, but what's different about this email is uh, we're sending it to the vendor so we're collecting the vendor's email address on our form and it says please find attached purchase order now because we've just generated the document into the document library we know the file name we set the file name and so notice here we can go through and specify the URL for that document library with the subfolder and then the file name for that as we know is going to be the same as the title for this purchase order document it's going to be the purchase order number .docx. so we within two buttons are able to generate a word document copy of this purchase order and then we're able to attach it in an email in an automated fashion okay so uh, so they're the actions that we've got behind some of these action buttons and uh, we can just give those a will so let's just save and close okay so we'll go in first of all and edit because we were in the edit form just now okay now notice that I am not seeing the approve button because I am not an approver okay uh, but what we can do is uh, is generate the document so let's just hit that okay now we don't see anything at the moment uh, so what I'm going to do is actually just open up the document library so there's the subfolder called purchase orders and you can see a few seconds ago this document here was generated the two three four five six seven so let's go back into that and uh, what we're going to do is just set a vendor email and I'm going to set that to this demo account so demo at lightning tools product demo dot on Microsoft dot com okay so it's going to send it to that that vendor uh, so I'll hit the send to vendor so it says a copy of the purchase order document has been sent to the vendor and what we'll do now is open up my email 
So let's just go in here to Outlook. And here we go. So there's the attachment of 234567.docx. And if we open that up, there's our purchase order with the computer that we've uh, raised the purchase order for. Okay, so there's a, a couple of examples of command button actions that you could perform on your forms. If there's any questions, please reach out to help at lightningtools.com. Many thanks.